Hi, I'm Kudo Mal, Branch Chief of Kudo Wales in the UK. I'm on a mission to raise awareness for Kudo and the benefits of being a martial artist. Kudo is a full contact mixed martial arts and combat sport developed by Grandmaster Azuma Takashi. In my opinion, Kudo is the perfect way for martial arts to pressure test the efficiency and their technique as well as their fighting ability as it's the closest thing you're going to get to a real fight. Today on Fight and Talk we are privileged to hear the inspiring story of someone who went from living a very active life to being in a wheelchair. Tom discusses how he went from being depressed, wanting his leg amputated, to becoming an award-winning lecturer at a local college. Let's meet Tom. Hey Tom, Tom Jones, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm fab. Let's let's get the Tom Jones bit out of the way because obviously there's always a gag and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, it's not unusual. It's it's not it's not unusual. <laughs> you know, you're not married to Delilah or anything like that. It's all no, no, it's all normal. So, um, <laughs> but it's a cracking Welsh name, and that, that's why I'm glad to to get this on the channel. So, uh, big welcome to you, Tom. How, how's things been? Yeah, it's fine. No problems with getting on with it. You know, it's it's a strange time for everybody, but you know, we just got to make what you can of it and keep on moving forwards. Yeah. So just quick check, yeah, obviously you've got the, the club uh, kit on, lovely, good job, and a, and a brew. This brew's there. With a brew. uh, so Tom is, uh, is a recently joined member of Gojan Akudo Academy, and uh, we've got talking uh, a number of times on so many different levels because, you know, let's face it, mental health is, uh, is everybody's topic at the minute, and COVID, obviously, uh, COVID cut, you know, there used to be a crew cut, but now it's a COVID cut. Um, you know, and we're about to go back into lockdown. So I think this is this is really, hopefully, quite informative for a lot of people. Hopefully, it will uh, uh, this will benefit them. So just before we start, Tom, a little bit of about yourself and um, what you've what your journey's been until coming to into martial arts. Yeah. Um, well, where'd you start, really? So yeah, you know, local boy born and bred. Um, uh, gone to school here. Uh, joined the army reserves and the cadets when I was younger. Uh, studied at college uh, and sixth form, then uh, ended up working for um, the reserves and then into the police. Gave it all up to go into the Air Force full time, um, damaged my spine, outcome all my work. Uh, had two operations, ended up back to normal, had another accident at work, which just completely rendered me useless basically. Uh, about four years, another four operations. Uh, ended up then going back into education, into university, into teaching, um, and then it snowballed and I haven't stopped or looked back since. I think the thing that stands out for me the most is that um, obviously you'd sent through a contact, you know, through our yeah. contact page and um, you wanted to join. And when I'd said what, what made um, the difference between us at the time, it was just the fact that we got back to you, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the biggest one, you know, because... Uh, Obviously, my problem is spinal trauma and spinal yeah. damage, you know, and I've done so well to get to where I am. I didn't want to make it worse. So I yeah. put it out there and I probably put it out to maybe 10 or 15 different clubs. Yeah. Um, and one got back to me and said, just no. Yeah. You were the only one to come back to me and said, let's have a chat. Yeah. You know, that to me made the difference. Right. I think even if, if we worked out it wasn't good for me, I still yeah. would have supported you because you were the only one who gave, yeah. gave me the time. And that makes a difference. It's, it's you know. Time is precious, and the people to make the time for you, that's, that's where, where it counts. Yes, I mean, anybody watching this now will be looking at you and thinking, I mean, he's in, he's in good shape, right? You, you know, you, you look like there shouldn't be any issues for you to join the martial arts club. Um, obviously, you said spine, which is a little bit of a, you know, people are starting yeah. to worry. And um, in Kudo, obviously, with impact and ground and all the rest of it. Um, you know, I, but the thing that crossed over me the most was, was not just about, um, you know, your injury, if you like, but just across the board for disability, because a while back, um, you know, I was put forward for like an award for seeing ability, not disability, right? And since then, you know, that, that just opened my mind to every single thing. So when someone walks through the door um, and they say, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. I'm always looking for things they can do and work with them to be able to make those steps. Now, like obviously since knowing you since you you know and I'm, that's why I was kind of really desperate to get you on here you're probably one of the most inspiring people that I've met this year without a doubt and and, and it probably in the last kind of decade and I can see that humbles you straight away and you were yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I hinted at an award but you know 
how many awards to do with all of this have, have you picked up? Is it, in a, is it the last five years? Is, is that fair to yeah, say? Yeah, I've, I've been teaching since 2014 is when I started. Um, so yeah, you know, I've, I've picked up a couple and I've been put forward from for a couple. Um, but I think, you know, like you said, yeah, it is a journey. It, it is going through. And, but it's nice to see people like yourself who don't see the disability, but the people who see the ability. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that, 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 that in itself, like I said, is, right, what can you do? And it's getting that mindset and that focus and, and you know, and then people have now stand up and see me for who I am yeah. and not for what I was or what I've got. You know, it, 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 it's showing people that, you know, yeah, you've got a disability. Yeah, have. But, you know, it's how you learn, treat, and you roll, like you roll with the punches. Yeah. When you yeah. roll with it and you go with it, you know, like we were discussing last night, you know, when you're taking a big hit or somebody, if you're going to stand there, it's going to hurt. Yeah. You're going to get knocked out. If you're yeah. going to roll with it, you've got a good chance of coming off it. All right, yeah. not great, yeah. but you're going to keep on going. Uh, I think for me, you know, having people like yourselves who take the time and will listen to someone, yeah and show them that they will roll with you yeah makes difference do you think i mean obviously you know going back to the disabilities that there's people out there that that are just not doing things the fear of being told no immediately oh, with, with, without a doubt and it's taken me a long time to get to that point yeah um but i was always brought up and told that you know if you don't ask you don't get yeah so that has always stuck with me. And I've, you know, I'm dyslexic, I'm left-handed, I've had my challenges with education. I actually never thought I was going to be a teacher. I hated teachers. I liked them personally, yeah. but, you know, if you sat me down and got me writing, that was the end of it. I didn't like you. You know, I, I hated it. I, and I look back and I laugh and giggle at myself because that's me. Um, but, yeah, you know, it, there's loads of people that just don't go forward because they think they can't. Well, you might not be able to do it in that sense, but there's never saying you can't do it in another sense. Yeah. Um, and it's quite interesting because it obviously, you know, going back to, to the martial arts side of things, I've learned now that, yeah, I'm probably not as great at stand up fighting, but I know that I've put in a bit of timber than I used to be. And I've now got the power to kick and I've got the power to drag someone down to the floor. Yeah. So it's all about, and, and that's one of the things I actually like about uh, Kudo is that, you know, you are not just limited to one box. Yeah, you yeah. do what you do to make it work for you yeah. uh, and you get the opportunity to have it all and, and that's what people need to um you know just ask if you don't ask you don't get and if, if you know and if you get told no well they're not worth your time when you skimmed through your your life then it was like i kind of went this 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 then there was this pivotal part right where everything's stripped of you and i think that's the parallel i'm drawing upon that you're going into covid um, we were all stripped of all of the skills that we've got. You know, yeah. literally, you can't go anywhere, you can't do anything. You know, no. it's kind of my own wheelchair, but without being you know, disrespectful to the. No, you know, no, 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 right, no, no, no. Now, how did you go? Because I'd seen the, the photographs of you, you know, looking very smart in, in, in your gear and all the rest of it, to being in a wheelchair, not looking very happy at all. That no, you so, so how did that, how did that yeah. work? Yeah, so um, I joined the regulars in 2009. Yeah. Uh, and I was about nine to 10 stone. I couldn't put weight on. I was one of those lucky people, yeah. um, <laughs> as people would say. But, I, you know, I wanted to bulk up and be bigger. It didn't work. So I, I went through and through. And then probably 2000, and I'm trying to think now my first operation. 2000, I think it was my son now. <laughs> <laughs> probably 11 then I was probably about 17 stone then 2012 I was about 20 stone um, so when my when my ability stopped you know I couldn't wash my legs I couldn't stand up I couldn't sit I couldn't do anything so when all that started to go um, you know my my physical health and mental health took a huge huge um, battering you know my, 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 myself and my wife had just been married literally the year before. I told my wife to leave me many times because mm -hmm. I said, it's not fair on you. Uh, fair pay to her, she didn't, <laughs> luckily enough for me. Um, but, you know, yeah, I was, I was in the dumps. I was bad. Severe depression, anxiety. And I had it all before. <laughs> At least he's washed his hands. He's a good boy. <laughs> you, you know, and I didn't go to the doctors beforehand. I went to the doctors afterwards when it was too late. Right. 
so with my you know well, I was going to the doctors nearly every week with my physical health but my mental health was never really broached um that question wasn't really asked I was a young man people just sort of pushed it to one side yeah. um actually there was a lot of people who didn't even um say like when I couldn't work and you had to apply for benefits yeah I you know being taken to go to an assessment center where people didn't believe that I was something wrong with me because I was young right so all those things impact you so all those little bits that that really really you know I, I was taking it was roughly about 12 tablets a day morphine um slow release of morphine breakthrough morphine uh you know i couldn't wash i couldn't stand i couldn't sit i couldn't um i, I just wasn't me uh, you know it was it was horrendous a follow-up i don't you know i don't really I don't really tend to look back at the photos because it's a, a period of my life which wasn't great for me. Yeah. But um, getting help, putting my hand there, yeah. uh, seeing a counsellor. I yeah. thought counsellors were rubbish at first. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to do it. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I couldn't, I couldn't even push my own wheelchair. So literally I was forced to go because my, my wife and my mother would literally stick me in the car and just dump me outside the room saying, you're going. Yeah. And then after so long, it started to work for me you know the tablet started to work for me after a couple of different times the counter started to work for me I started doing things for myself i kept a diary i learned about little stuff as in i would just keep a little diary and i've still got it now i don't use it anymore but every day i'd write what was good yeah. what was bad but that connection of me being able to turn it over and have and then see a clean sheet really really helped me start to visualize okay. actually this has got to stop now and I need, to, I need to own this, not it own me. Right. So that's what I suppose that's a bit I was going to get to is that, you know, for, uh, for me, the last two years, I was helping other people, right? And then I had some very nice people turn around to me and say, look, you can't pour from an empty cup. And I never really understood that until yeah, got there, yeah. right? And yeah. um, you, you, quite often, people don't want to um, say they're depressed or they say they're down. Because of a comparison to, do you know, when there's someone's situation is always worse, yeah, and then someone says it could be worse, and then it kind of makes you feel that your situation, you should just be able to get on with it. And yeah, it makes you it makes you feel horrendous. Yeah. You know, at, at that time, um, I know she wanted to say my mother-in-law was going through her first lots of treatment for cancer. Um, you know, and it, and, yeah. and the old school already worse off than you, yeah. but it took someone to turn around and say, yeah, there is somebody worse off than you, mm. but that's not affecting you. What's affecting you is now here the present yeah. and, and that's one of the things i actually struggle with it is um either live in the past or live in, or live in the future yeah either oh i wish i said this or i wish i'd done this or i wish i'd done that or oh in the future i'm going to do this it's living now and when they start to explain to me you need to live now and deal with what's going on now yeah you know you can't help others if you can't help yourself it's like first aid yeah you know you've got to be prepared to help others but you've got to be safe and if you you're not hundred percent you're not gonna help us like you said you can't pour from an empty cup i always thought that it would be you know your kids that motivated you your wife or it would be something that would be an external factor that you've got do you know i just gotta pull myself together for them but all of those things have gone aren't they when it, and at the end of the day it has to get to a point where you have to want to do it for yourself right yeah do you, do you do you remember that moment that i don't remember the moment but i remember the time um okay, so it was like a period yeah. The time came when I was, um, I was, I was, you know, tr trying to claim benefits, and they said to me, "Right, um, you've got to go back to work." I was like, "I can't go back to work." Like, you're going back to work. I was like, "Well, what do you want from me?" So they said, oh, "I'll tell you what. Um, go down to the job centre and uh, go choose a qualification to do." Okay, so we will be down to the job centre. Took my CV with me. And they were like, well, you can do this, 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 and this. I said, but I've got that, 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 and that. What do you want me to do? Well, you need to do something. Well, I said, I'm not going to sit here and do um, whatever it was that I've already got. I think it was in English or maths. I said, well, what's the point? How is that going to help me? Yeah. I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go away and do it myself. And at that point then, did it give me the motivation to think, actually, I've already got these things that you're offering me. I can better myself. I can do something else. And I actually went uh, to the college uh, I went to, to the local college and I was going to be a learning support assistant. Right. And, and, you know, at that point still couldn't even wheel my own wheelchair. My mother wheeled me in and I met a lovely lady called Dawn. I, I called Dawn now, my work on Dawn Latham. She's fantastic. And we had the conversation like we're having now. And I said, look, I want to be an LSA. 
she was like, all right, okay, so tell me about you, what have you done, blah, blah, blah. And she looked at my qualifications, she said, I'm sorry, you're not coming on the course. Mm. I was like, kick a man when he's down, you know, I was like, but you know, yeah. horrendous. She goes, you've got to be a teacher, come with me. And what, 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 what do you mean a teacher? I said, I don't want to be a teacher. She goes, you've got to be a teacher, you've got it. She said, share what you've got, you've got it. And she literally just picked, got the wheelchair, took me straight down to enrollment, and said, he's coming on my teaching course, He'll be here, it's sorted, it's done. And at that point then, it was yeah. somebody who wasn't from my family, yeah. who was able to, who I've never met before. I've met, you know, met this person for five minutes, who could see the value in me, sparked off my value again. Yeah. And then I just didn't look back. Don't get me wrong, my first day in lectures, I have no problems with admitting that I went home and cried because I was like, <laughs> what am I doing? What am I doing? I forgot how to write, I don't know how to hold a pen anymore, you know? They're all talking about references and paraphrasing. I'm thinking I'm dyslexic, I'm, I'm left-handed, I, I can't spell <laughs> here. And then, it, it, you know, hard work came into it. And, and exactly when I got my master's, is exactly the same thing. I sat there and they said, right, we're doing Dickensian economics. Yeah. Just sat in the back of the class and almost cried for like the, the, the six hours, you know. But it, it, was, it was having somebody who was outside your family, because your family's fantastic. They're your support, they're your bubble. Yeah. But sometimes it takes somebody who you've never met before yeah. to give you that little bit of a shake yeah. to go, you've got it, yeah. you can do it. And you think, hang on, maybe I can. Yeah. And that's that, what, that, leap, that, leap of, that leap of faith, isn't it? It comes down to a level of trust, doesn't it? But when you've done something yourself, which is so close to your life, that somebody like Kieran and AJ just said, right, um, we've just got this. And I trusted them. And the rest is history because it was moving me from one place to another, like that character. So the next thing then is like, I think with mental health, there's a stigma obviously. And there's um, some pretty mean people said that, oh, Mal's broke, broken down as this because people thrive, don't they, from negativity. They just love it, right? So the, do you know when you're at that stage then where, you know, you want to do something, you've got this person that's kind of moving you on to the next stage of your life. You've got this hope, this passion again. You know, and that, and this channel is called Fighting Talk, and I think sometimes yeah. people think it's all going to be just about scrapping, you know. But fight is obviously inside, right? So you're at that stage then. Do you think that that, that people then can label you? So um, did you become that guy in the wheelchair? I, you, I was, uh, yeah, I was the guy in the wheelchair. I was the guy yeah. that everyone looked there at. I was the guy who people thought they had to open a door for me because I was in a wheelchair. Yeah. They soon realised that I would bash through those doors wherever they're going to open the door for me or not. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, just because I'm disabled doesn't mean I want to go to the front of the queue. Yeah. Right. You know, I'll wait my turn. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm the same. And, it, and then, you know, one of my uh, close friends who was on the PGC with me, on the teacher training with me, yeah. then started, you know, working with me. And well, I knew a fruit from my wife, but I never really met her before. So, you know, it was nice for me to have somebody there. And then the, the, the group we were with was my support group, basically. Yeah. Because... Um, they took me, they could learn that, you know, it wasn't about the disability, it was about the person. But loads of people who didn't know me, it was yeah. very much, oh, yeah. he's in a wheelchair, oh, we can't say too much of him, yeah. you know, or, or, or don't, don't do that, or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, you know, or on the other hand, especially working in education, you know, people wouldn't think that I would challenge them if they're doing something wrong. Yeah, right. And, and I, I live by the yeah. standards and values of that, if I'm willing to walk past it, I'm willing to accept it. Yeah. But if, if I see somebody shouting, screaming, swearing, I didn't care whether I was in a wheelchair or not, I was still going to challenge it. Yeah. Because that's me. And, and, and to, it, it took a lot of people to, to, to stop and go, actually, no, he, he doesn't mess around. You know, we, we can't yeah. pull tricks on him or we can't do this or, yeah. or we can't see too much because it might, it might offend him, you know. I had yeah. to learn had to, to deal with that. Like, you know, because there's a difference between empathy and sympathy, you know. And people just want to go, oh, poor you. And then, you know, you've got this, you've got this career so far, you know, and then you have this, you know, point of your life, which just, you know, feels like it's just got the bomb right in the middle of it. And that's that. And they're saying that's, a, that's behind you now. So nothing in the future is going to be as good as what's behind you. Right. And, and, and you're like, no, does that build a bigger fire to say, actually, you know, oh, yeah. you, 
I'm I'm doing it. Like you stopped me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like I said, I, I'm lucky that I was. I you know I've been brought up from very good family, and my family yeah. always taught me to fight. Yeah. Not not physical, physically. I always yeah. look after myself, but they've taught me, and, and I've seen them fight for me. So yeah. whereas my mother and my father didn't go to school, they didn't. It was wasn't done in those days. They knew that I had a problem with dyslexia, and they did their best to make sure. Yeah. And they fought for years. And I mean years. My school was terrible. They just said. Go into special needs group. Yeah. Oh, I can do maths. No, go in special needs group. Go in the yeah. corner, basically. Go yeah. sit over there. Yeah. And it used to frustrate the hand out of me. So I've seen my parents fight for me. Yeah. So when I got my spirit back, I'm at this point now where I won't say no and I can't take no for an answer. If someone yeah. tells me I can't do something, guess what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do it. And that's what I like. More. Well, I want my students to learn that there's always another door, yeah. there's always a plan B. There's always, you know, as long as you keep on fighting, you will get there. Well, no matter if it's you, my rehabilitation was one step a day. If it's one step a day, that's a step forward you've gone. And if you fall down, guess what? Do it again. Do it yeah. again. It, it, it is, I mean, it's still cliche, you know, you fall off your bike, you get back on. Yeah. But that's life. And, and sometimes it takes us a while to get back on. But as long as you get back on, yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a powered bike anymore or yeah. if it's a pedal bike or a motorbike. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. As long as you try it. That's the, you know, if, if my, my son goes, you know, whatever he learns from life is the fact that don't give up. Try yeah. a different route. Yeah. It doesn't work That's one way. It is, isn't it? You know, like on our, you know, we're saying like us, it's a big thing in, in yeah, it based styles, you know, persevere, endure, don't give up, that type, of, you know, that theme. That that's kind of the, the core thing, isn't it? And uh, so you're you're not going to boast. Um, so you go you go from a situation where you could be the guy or Tom in the wheelchair or the guy in the wheelchair, um, someone that's not necessarily um, being represented well, and now all of a sudden you you fight your way through it all. You get your your teaching calls, um, and then you win the awards for teaching qualifications, and we were talking earlier that you even got to the UK. So what? What were the what were the what were the awards you won? Because I, yeah. I think it's amazing. Yeah, it's not something that I like to to, to brag about because I don't think it's me. But it's <laughs> and I have a, and I've got this. So um, uh, PS and BTEC awards um, for uh, excellence. So it's just the qualification companies. Um, my, my college is um, HE student, things like that I had. Um, then it went on to, because I used to teach part-time for the Adult Education Centre, so a local council award for, for teaching. Yeah. Then it went on to the, the Welsh Vocational Teaching Awards, which I won to be the Welsh Vocational Lecturer. Yeah. Um, then it went into the TES Awards, which we said was the, um, was the, the UK in, in lecturers. I was in the top 10 of lecturers, um, which is a fantastic opportunity to go to. Yeah. Uh, and then recently, more recently, it was the Armed Forces in Wales Awards for Youth Work. Yeah. Um, didn't win all of them, but yeah. it was so nice that that somebody had, had put me forward for it, and I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. you know, it was, it was somebody who, and the majority of these people who've actually put me up for an award, I've never worked with directly. Somebody from from a different department, a different area, someone I've never reported to. Yeah, has gone. Hang on, we've got something here. Uh, and you know those were really qu quite big highlights. Um, but then you know it, it's great, but you can't just stop there. You can't rest on your laurels. You can't stop. You've got to keep on going. No, um, no I mean, yeah. you were aiming for those awards anyway. So no, you know, God, no, just, no, no, being you, no, right? No, no, that's, without a doubt. Yeah, that's the best. That's the best thing about it, you know. And what I found is that awards inspire other people, right? And you said that. Um, when you look at the photographs, you don't like that particular phase because it makes you sad again, I guess, you know? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, without a doubt, yeah, yeah. Right, now, um, when, I, I can't help but do this, but you know, uh, everybody thinks that when you've recovered, uh, that's it, that's the end of the story. Like, you know, you go off into the sunset and uh, this is that x factor sort of thing, isn't it? And then yeah, hoping yeah. that they're gonna win, right? Um, but, and they sell that, but so, I mean, do you, the, the kind of what what things get you to a point now that actually you start regressing and then you think well actually this is what I do because you've learned those skills to get back to your yeah. feet. Well, yeah, yeah, well, without a doubt, you know, I, you know, I am not fully recovered. I still struggle now with my mental health. I still struggle with anxiety at the minute. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, I find that when I end up having too many plates to spin, yeah, and not time to spin them, I, I, I struggle, you know, and I can. But I think that the big thing is that I've now learnt what my triggers or what my, you yeah. know, I know that if I start snapping, yeah, I, I know that um, I start stress. It, it's work is one of my biggest things because I'm so passionate about it. Yeah. I yeah. find yeah. it hard to get a work life balance, and yeah. that's my own personal. It's nothing to do with my employer. That's just me. My employer yeah. tells me, Tom, stop working. Yeah. <laughs> my bosses tell me, right, that's it now, you know, switch off, blah, blah, blah. You can't yeah. do it. But my yeah. employer will tell me off if I send an email late at night. Right. Um, but me, being a perfectionist, which I shouldn't be, as, as we, we, you know, we, we've discussed lots of time, you know, there is no perfection in a fight. It's yeah. what you do there and then. Um, and I find that when I take on too much, it all gets too much for me. But I'm at the point now where I don't mind putting my hand up and saying, sorry, this is getting to me, that's getting to me, you know, blah, blah, blah. I yeah. need to go back to the doctors. I need yeah. a little bit of help. Um, I need to focus on this or focus on that. And, uh, and that's where I've learned. But yeah, without a doubt, I am scared with yeah. every single day that I'm going to do my back in again. Right, yeah. I, I, am, I am horrendously scared. Every time before I come to the dojo, yeah. I have no problem saying I'm shit in my pants. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I know I'm safe, yeah. Yeah. but I'm worried thinking, right, is this going to be the day? Yeah. But then that could be the day any day. Yeah. That could be the day when I literally just slip on the curb outside. So yeah. unless I live my life like that, I'm never going to go anywhere. I'm never going to do anything. And like I told you before, I'm willing to try. Mm. And I'm willing to, yep, yeah, right, let's try it at 10%. Let's try it at 20%. Let's go a little bit more and work out where my comfort range is. Yeah. And I've, I've had days where, and like a lot of my rehabilitation, I, I, I gave up on physiotherapists. I gave up because it didn't work for me. Yeah. Doing do this stretch, do this, yeah. do that, didn't work. What yeah. worked for me was functional rehabilitation. Right. And by that, I mean, I got myself a dog. So I knew I had to walk that dog every day because yeah. I had to do it. And yeah. it was five minutes, then it was 10 minutes, then it was 15 minutes, you know, being able, you know, I'm quite house proud, and, you know, so being able to put the hoof around. I managed to do downstairs today. Tomorrow, I'm going to do downstairs and one of the stairs. So yeah. I utilized that the, 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 in my head, it wasn't about doing this exercise. It was doing a functional job and feels like you contribute again. Yeah. Cause at that time I knew that I couldn't go up to work as much as I was doing, yeah, yeah. but if I could do more at home because I've lived in the environment where it doesn't matter if you're male or female, you do housework. It, it's got nothing to do. You know, my, my mum and dad are hundred percent equal. You cook, I cook, you clean, I can, you know, you sew, I sew. Yeah. And so it was nice for me to get back to feel as though I could give something back. But yeah. I pull myself every day thinking that, oh, have I gone too far today? Yeah, yeah. That makes uh, sense. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, and that mental health balance is definitely is a fine line. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've got you know, coping strategies now, haven't you? You know, you've got you know, words I, I, you I've had before. It's great to hear that you've got an employer that, that's willing to give you that kind of... That yeah. Stop that, look after yourself. You know. Yeah, and, and that makes a difference because it, even if not even just employee, just just for anything, I'm I'm a, a, a complete sod with taking on too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now I'm at the point where I go, do you know what? No, I need to live in the present. I need to live now, and that you know it's too much for me. And there's nothing wrong with you saying no once in a while. Yeah. Because like you said before, if you don't look after yourself, yeah, you can't look after others. And then there's there's a few people I've seen on on my Facebook, and you know when um, I was saying that they they don't feel like they can, can speak up because of this kind of we call we in the club we, we call it like our top trumps, don't we? You know, it's like when yeah, one yeah. of us has got an issue with their eyes, it was going to let with their legs, and everybody's going, yeah. everybody's got it worse, and who's who's got the best situation, you know, cop out or whatever. But it's like a scenario where you just become very negative in conversation all of the time. You know, and you just in the end you feel like you don't want to speak because you obviously you're aware of you sounding really negative. Yeah. And then something that jumped up uh, to me was um, someone put a quote on. I can't remember who the quote was, but it was it was along the lines of that only in the darkness you can see the stars. You know, and and I thought that was a that was a brilliant quote because it actually said it's all right to 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 be there as long as you're looking and appreciating where to go next, and that's. That's what resonated with me with with you. Now, we're moving it on to the coming like the transferable skills, if you like. So, um, for me, the darkness can be very dark. It's if if you've been caught hard and you're spinning and you're sat on the floor and you're thinking, "Wow, where did that come from?" Um, yeah. You know, as far as the strikes and 
And um, you're never fit enough. You know, you're never, never strong enough. You're never fast enough. Uh, you never know everything. And, and martial arts is something that, that's always taught me um, those tough life skills. You know, so, you know, perfection, like I said, again, in the session, is, is not something you aim for it. Um, you never get there. And it's a good job you don't get there for obvious reasons, you know, um, so because you come complacent. And I think in lots of martial arts that that, that complacency is a, there's quite often you can achieve a black belt um, in whatever art and never really be tested, you know, or being tested at a certain point. Now you can take your foot off the pedal because you're a black belt and it's OK to do that now. Um, when it's in when you're part of a, um, a system where it's just so big, you know, like Kudo, for instance, involves so many different martial arts that it's, it is an endless uh, situation yeah. where you can yeah. learn everything from anywhere and involve it. Um, I mean, you're, you're, with us having so many options, we can work around that for you, can't we, you know? We can, um, and it's one of the things... Think you educate us pretty much on what you can and what you can't do, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's and if I'm honest, you know, I, I have done martial arts before. When I was young, and I mean young, young, probably from six, I started off in Kaikashin in the early 90s, yeah. where it was quite obvious that, you know, if it operated today the way it did then, it would be shut down for child abuse and neglect. Yeah. I'll be honest. <laughs> I really would be honest, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. five and six, punching a, a, a punch bag full of gravel, getting hit with a bamboo stick because you're not jumping high enough. Yeah. It wouldn't happen today, would it? No. You know. Um, and then I, I dabbled a little bit. Then in um, I did. Uh, it was a form of Korean karate kickboxing. Yeah. It was great, but then it got boring because it was the same thing time and time yeah. and time. And I just left because I was a kid. I was twelve, thirteen. I was like, Do you know what? Yeah. This is boring. This is not challenging me. And yeah. one of the things I've learned is that I like challenges. Um, yeah. And then yeah, you know, I did judo for whilst I was working for the police in custody, uh, yeah. and unfortunately I stopped that then whilst I was in the air force because my spine. Yeah. But yeah, this is fantastic because kudo is, it doesn't stop. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I mean, t you know, I, yeah, you know, yeah. I, um, BJJ, uh, Kapu, I can't, I can't oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, Kaikushin, uh, just stand the Shotokan karate, even even uh, aspects of boxing. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it's all there and it doesn't stop. And that's the good thing is that, you know, we've all got these issues without a doubt. Yeah. But the form of what we do, you can be a specialist in your ability, not your yeah. disability, yeah. but your yeah, ability. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and like I said, you now it was quite funny that, you know, um, getting involved again and getting hands on, um, noticing that actually my style has changed as I've got older. Yeah. So um, I'm actually forgetting it's okay to punch. Yeah. Uh, it, it sounds silly, but from, especially from working in the custody environment, the police, yeah, where yeah. I've gone from uh, Kaikushin and kickboxing to then to judo, where, you know, it's very much, it was grappling, it was dragging down to the floor, it was controlling. Um, and yesterday, I think to myself, you've got to start punching. You can punch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but I'm concentrating, yeah. looking at arms, legs, this, that, and the other. I'm thinking, yeah. I can start punching. It's fine. Yeah. You know, but I know that that's my thing I need to work on. And that's my yeah. challenge. Yeah. You know, I know that I've got enough weight on me. If I just get older, somebody, and if I fall to the floor, there's a good chance that they're going to come with me, yeah. whether I want them to or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, Kudo finds it. You know, you're able to just you can't put your finger on it, basically. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. I think it becomes that. You know, it's like all of the the, the cheesy kind of Bruce Lee. You know, be like water, my friend. You know, it, it does pretty much fit, doesn't it? You know, like I. Um, after meeting Jukucho and, and sitting in Malta listening to him, um, you know, telling me directly about the head guards and all the experience that he's been through and the challenges that he's had as a person. And he wants people to practice Kudo and for longevity so they can still do it. So Kudo as the sport or Daidu Juku Kudo as in the, the path, um, the martial art is beautiful. It really is. And um, you know, where it's a hybrid system, obviously, karate and judo. Um, but there's so many people have come from different martial arts that are actually combine your things and just share their learning. It's a, it's a really beautiful thing, you know. It's lovely because you will know as an educator yourself, you take the best parts of everything. Mm. You know, you're a effective practitioner. I like how they've done that. Oh, I like how they do that. I like how they do this. I like how they do that. And yeah. the good thing is about it, it's not gone. No, it's not. I said, well, you can't use it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Could you do Steve, for example? Judo Steve, yeah. exactly. 
the name yeah. says it all, you know, yeah. we're bringing a specialist yeah. just yeah. on that aspect. Yeah. You, you know, being able to have so many, uh, the, the good things, taking, yeah. you know, that happened, this happened, and that happened, yeah. and, and, you know, uh, like, you know, it's like traditional karate, it's, whoa, stand there. When actually, yeah. you know, oh, fuck, that's not going to happen. No, 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 no. no. And, no. Uh, you know, and like you said, it's all good having these plans of perfect um, punches and jabs and crosses and hooks. Yeah. When you get smacked in the head, <laughs> window, you know, you lose your temper, but that's it, it's gone. So, yeah, you, it's you know, so it, it, it's all those things that, the, 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 you know, the martial arts and the sport and the, and the club in general, mm. it takes everybody's best bits. Yeah, and I think, like yeah. you've seen about, um, you know, like obviously Kudo is a sport at the top level. So there's, there's the elite level, which, you know, it's something really quite, and, and you know, in Japan, like normally if I go to a martial arts competition, I'm all right for about an hour. And after that, I'm just bored out of my brain, you know? Um, and if you go to other forms of like mixed martial arts, whatever, it's like one fight versus one fighter, you know, watching fight after fight after fight, you know, uh, kids, women's fights, like the just some spectacular quality there. Um, it's, it's still got everything for someone that wants to achieve the top level. Um, but it also, it's like, like, I suppose this is what I kind of wanted to get this on this video as well, was that, that you can come into Kudo and, you know, people look at the highlight reels and think, oh my God, like, <laughs> it's people, bang, bang, you know, and then they're, they're not realizing that actually you're learning a very holistic self-defense set for you. For, and then if you can make it work on the map, fantastic. If you don't want to be competing, you don't need to be. No, because you know? I'm, I'm not in it for competing. Um, exactly. That's just, you know, I'm just, that's just not me. Um, but, you know, like you said, the longevity, the fitness, um, the confidence. Yeah. Um, the, the making friends. Yeah. You know, I, I, as, as I'm a professional and they spend a lot of time in work, yeah, a lot of people I do become close to. But it's nice to have a group of friends mm. outside yeah. That on one minute you can literally be headbutting somebody, <laughs> or done. You're just chatting about how you're feeling. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So yeah. I, I think, you know, the, the sport, the club, and you put it all together. You know, yeah. you don't, you're not. You know, I am not in this to, to be. You know, go world champion. This, that, and the other. Mm. I'm in this for fitness. I'm in this for a challenge. Mm. You know, I'm in this for. It sounds a bit. Um, what's the word? Probably unprofessional of me. I'm in there to go there and be a student. It's nice yeah. being a student. Yeah, yeah. But I know that I can go there and not switch off. Mm. But I've got me time, which for me yeah. is important to me. And, yeah. You know, because you, you need, uh, you know, mental health and physical health all comes together with kudo because you need the body and yeah. you need the mind. Yeah. And yeah. that it gives you the both. And just being taught how to breathe, you know, like we were doing yesterday. You know, yeah. yeah. Just getting those breathing things that they're right. Breathe once your body, hmm. breathe once your mind. That will transfer later on. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. guarantee I'll get to a point where I'll have an argument with somebody, or I'm not happy the way something's been done, and I have to go right. And that it'll just kick back in. You know, there's there's going to be a lot of people struggling out there. It's Christmas. Um, Christmas is not great for everybody. You know, there's people that you're going to be missing. There's times um, that that kind of it's you know it's not it's just not brilliant. You know, and. No. And that, it's not brilliant to pass the time, no. I mean, for anybody, let's, let's look at these different things, right? So, so what, what advice would you give? You've got somebody, anybody, that suffered an injury and finds himself in a wheelchair. What advice would you give to them? Put your hand up and ask for help. Let, you know, and, and help from anywhere. Anyone who wants to help you. It doesn't matter, you, you know helps good it can be endearing but on the other hand you know you, you just you just need someone sometimes just to i used to have a is um as you'll know from woody's lodge um yeah. do you ever meet jeff horton yeah so i knew jeff when i was a cadet and then i then jeff uh helped me after i come out of the air force and those you don't know he's a fantastic gentleman he must be in his 70s by now i don't know how he doesn't stop yeah. um you know jeff would literally come out to my house and be like go get a shave he would just tell me as it is, you know, and I'm used to that from my family because that's the way we've been brought out. I'm used to that with my wife, but to have somebody else say, right, grab a shave. Right, do you feel better now? 
you know, and it was having just just putting your hand up and saying, I just need help. And he gave me a little, he gave me like a little bit of a job. Or can you run our Facebook page for us? We're not very good on Facebook. Mm. You know, you're younger than us, you can do it. And you're like, oh, right, okay. Then it actually gave me something to do. So, you know, people are trying to help you. And it's having that, you know, put your hand up, I need help. Yeah. You know, in a, I, and I need it now. Yeah. Don't sit until it's too late. Don't sit there in the night drinking. Don't sit there mm. and think, you know, you're not going to get the help or it's not going to work for me. I don't know how many people go to doctors and they come back and go, well, they give me tablets, but I'm not going to take them. Yeah, yeah. Why? Why are you not going to take them? Yeah. You know, um, and like a lot of people don't understand that, especially with depression, it's serotonin. It's an yeah. actual medical condition. Your body's not producing enough chemicals. Mm. You're a chemical imbalance. So if you take these tablets, they will re-rectify your balance. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's pointless going for help. Mm. Someone giving you help and then you turn away and go, no, I'm not going to take them. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Because of the stigmatism you taking a tablet. Mm. It, do you know what I mean? It, it, it's yeah. that stigmatism you taking a tablet, whereas I know that you a couple of years ago would go out and go put coke up your nose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, so you won't take a tablet given to you by a doctor to help you, mm. but you think nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. And that's my personal. No, no that's, that's, that's yeah. it. And, and, and the last, last question I got really was the, um, one of the guys in Kudo, Ashley, um, he is in Birmingham. He's been pushing and fighting for Kudo to be accepted as one of the um, fighting arts um, in the armed forces. And obviously, there's things like the traditional stuff like karate, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is big now within the armed forces. Is, you know, yeah. Do you think that um, the kudo is a good fit for the the armed forces, and why? Why would you, if you do think that, what? You, why would you think it was? Well, yeah, without a doubt, you know, because I think as I've mentioned to you before, you know, the, the Israelis they use uh, Krav, um, mm. the United States Marine Corps use their own version of um, of, of a martial arts with the uh, MC, whatever it's called, Marine Corps Martial Arts Program, mm. um, a MCAP. You know, I think, yeah, without a doubt, at the end of the day, you sign a contract knowing that you're going to give your life up. Mm. That's what you signed for and that you are an armed member of a fighting force, whether you be a medic, whether you be a clerk, whether you be a mm. chef, whether you be an infantry soldier. At some point, mm. you, are go, you, are, you are agreed to go on that front line. Mm. Um, and, yeah, you know, the British Army does have a large um, armed force in general, has a large sporting ability. And they do have lots of British Army um, judo championships, British Army karate championships, into service judo championships. Actually, you know, judo BJ are very, very big, mm. but they haven't actually adapted one. Right. Okay. Or across across the use. Yeah. Um, now, like I've, I told you before, the, the Marines practice a little bit in it. The parachute, the, the parachute division practice a little bit. Special uh, reconnaissance regiment, all people like that. They they practice certain aspects. Um, mm. But actually, and even, I don't even know this, but the Gurkhas, they, they practice um, and they grade for Taekwondo. Really? <laughs> they do, yeah. And it's part of their syllabus, but it's not across the whole armed forces. Right. Um, whereas something like Kudo could really help because it's pressure tested. Mm. It's pressure tested. Uh, even the Paris, for example, they do Midin as part of their selection process. You wear what Midin is? No, no. So, you know, a part of it, to be called on P Company, that they go away and they do, you know, trinasium runs, this, that, and the other. But they have to do two minutes a million where they have to stand in a ring, head guard on, um, gloves, and they have to punch for the head. That's it. There's no kicking. There's no nothing. Right. They've got to show that they've got controlled aggression to punch for the head. Yeah. And you don't stop. Right. Um, but they're a small amount. Whereas if you could introduce something nationally, if you could show the whole route that, you know, the whole range of skills mm. that are utilized, all yeah. the benefits of it, yeah. you know, the close quarters fighting, yeah, without a doubt, at the end of the day, you will be in train to kill. Yeah. There is, you know, whether you are supporting that killing mm. or whether, you know, you are taking part in an assault. Mm. But, you know, being able to utilize the fitness ability, mm. The mental health, the transferable skills of it, yeah. um, and then you know you're used to fighting with equipment, to helmets, this, that, and the other, um, yeah. and to switching up styles. Yeah. Um, because as, as we all know, in a street fight, you end up have a perfect style, but it's the person who just basically hits the fastest and hits the hardest that's going to win. Yeah. Um, 
and, and you know, having something like that brought into across the forces would be a fantastic opportunity. Mm. Um, uh, I don't see why it's not there. I, I can never understand my own personal view, and, and I'll probably correct on this. Probably lots of people on the internet go, "No, that's wrong." Is that <laughs> you know? Yeah, okay. I was in the reserves. It's the reserves. I was in the air force. It wasn't really you know the, the fighting wings, as we say. Mm. But I was never actually taught any self defence, any combat. The closest I actually got was fencing because I I wanted to. Do, I was told you, you're lanky, left-handed, and cocky. Do you want to give it a go? Yeah, <laughs> and so I did, and yeah. I loved it. It was fantastic, but I actually struggled to keep my hand behind my back because I wanted to fight. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, hmm. you know, the opportunities are there, and and you know, it would be fantastic for British Army, Royal Air Force, Royal Navy to hmm. take this up as a concept, hmm. um, and to you know see how it can improve, how it can justify. You know, at the end of the day, you've got a lot of skilled people out there. You've got um, the armed forces. You've got lots of people, lots of experience. Yeah. Um, Crav is quite big in, in the armed forces, yeah. uh, but it, it's once again, it's all done on a local basis. It's if the club runs at your club. I think the gentleman we were saying, um, who we took talking about the Australian, I forgot his name now, is it Paul? Oh, Paul Kale, yeah. Yeah, you know, he was saying that you, know, you go to one base, they do this, you go to another base, they do that. Mm. You go to one base, you all kudos all that together. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. why not give it a go? And then you've also got the ability then to, to cross train. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. With, yeah, because I mean, that, that's been with, the beauty of it, you know, not walking in and someone say, What do you do? And then you say, I don't know, karate, or you say some judo, or say something, and then, or you've done a bit of this, or you've done a bit of that. And then they go, Oh, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then everything slows down, you know. So, exactly. You know, you've got the ability yeah. to cross train and work with others for, for uh, multiple different, you know, um, mm -hmm. reasons and, and ways. Um, yeah, I think personally, it'd be good to have a, a standardized um, platform. I think judo could really mix the goals because it's right in between yeah you, like you said, you can't yeah. put your finger on it it yeah. can be adapted yeah you know like, like the ability of like, like having the strong key to call grab hold of is just like grabbing hold of body armor yeah 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 you know even the, the masks and, and the helmets you know getting somebody at the back of the helmet and giving a good yank yeah okay you're having you know you're a good chance of damaging their neck yeah, yeah. Um, and you've got a good chance of grabbing hold of them well yeah. do you know what it's, it, it's exactly you know head butting it's exactly what it's designed for you know we yeah, yeah, use yeah. equipment you know so i think that you know personally um lots of people out there will disagree with me i think it, it's uh, i why not but yeah, then you know, a lot of people who agree with you as well i think that's what that's what we're hoping uh, to push that message know, but then i'm also this is me um on my own personal um views is i can't understand why we are not doing this in school for pe oh yeah true true you know if 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 we if we talk first aid swimming and martial arts mm. or even self-defense whatever you want to call it mm. as a staged part of the physical education program mm. how many lives would we save yeah 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 i mean the confidence of the kids yeah. the roof it'd stop taught out the bullying wouldn't it well you know first day for example doesn't have to get taught in wales no it's not law you know swimming everyone does two weeks and that's those who want to do two weeks that's it Mm. Well, do, do you know what? If we can bring kids in from a young age and teach them how to run away from something first, yeah, you know, that's yeah. how we. And that's my personal opinion. How we're going to stop knife crime? It is. Why do kids carry knives? Because they're scared of somebody else carrying a knife. Yeah. Well, if we give them the understanding and the ability to get away and to defend themselves, mm. they're going to stop carrying knives. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, Kudo once again could be a fantastic inroad into yeah. education, into you know a builder from grassroots from very very young. You know, it, it's all there. It's it's probably one of the most safest sports I've seen for children as well. You know, the yeah. amount of gear they've got to wear, yeah, yeah, is, is incredible. Mm. Um, you know, okay, it, it's a martial art. You're going to get hurt, but then you're going to get hurt if you go play football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not going to protest as much. <laughs> um, <Exactly. laughs> well. Um, well, that, that kind of brings me to the end of the questions. And um, tomorrow is your grading, so uh, everybody's going to be rooting for you tomorrow. And um, you know, obviously, we'll we'll hopefully be able to do a follow up. And um, you know, going for your your first grade, your tenth Q, and and um, obviously being an ambassador for for the sport, an ambassador for our club. And then I have to say thank you to it and cheers from everybody in the club. Um, everybody's no really keen to to watch this, so. Um, I'm going to get this edited and, and upload it as soon as I can. Um, wish you all the best and your family for Christmas. Thanks for taking all the time to do this. That's and, um, you know, 
all the best. Yeah, th thank you so much. Um, you know, the club's brought me in. I've told you before, you know, the club's brought me in and, and, is, and is brought me in and maybe one of their own. Um, so, so for me, I, I think it's fantastic. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I feel, uh, what's the word, uh, grace to be part of it, to be, to be honest with you. You know, it, 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 uh, it, it's a family, without a doubt. Um, so yeah, by all means, have a nice Christmas. Obviously, I'll, yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll yeah. probably be, you know, on the floor trying to breathe tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we'll see how that goes. But, you know, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. It's my pleasure, mate. And uh, I'll speak to you soon, okay? Take care. Nice. Nice.